Odds are high, you watched my very first YouTube video where I introduced you to a special bifurcated soldering tip which basically allowed you to desolder SMD components without the need of special soldering tweezers. If you genuinely don't know what I'm talking about, congratulations on missing my worst quality yet most popular video I ever made. I'm not even gonna give you a link to go watch it, you probably just got it in your recommended anyways. And while I do claim having invented this specific soldering tip, I definitely was not the first person to get the idea of using some kind of soldering tip with two prongs to desolder SMD components. Just beforehand, this idea looked much more like wrapping a paper clip around some kind of existing soldering tip. So much for soldering tip history. Now, my idea for this video was to show you the entire process I go through when salvaging surface mounted components using this soldering tip, show you all the steps involved in going from scrap printed circuit board to organized storage of the components, sharing useful tips and tricks along the way. Though before I can dig into this box of scrap circuit boards, I actually need to make more SMD soldering tips. Yes, believe it or not, you actually need a separate soldering tip for each package size SMD components come in. And also, yes, desoldering with hot air is probably easier. So the tips you can see here on the bench are the iterations it took me to get to the final design. This one here is my first attempt. I thought I was clever making one that would fit several component sizes, but it ended up being more of a pain in the ass getting the components out of it again. The second one is already dedicated to one component footprint, but the two prongs are way too thin to conduct any heat. Leaves us with version 3, the one I showed you in the first video, and this is the one I'm gonna replicate in different sizes. I made three more soldering tips, one of them is big enough to desolder full-sized rectifier diodes, and then I also made the two smallest reasonably usable sizes, I believe it's 805 and 603. Anything smaller than that, resistors don't even have codes on them anymore and that's just illegally small. So these four tips should pretty much cover all the footprints I'm ever gonna need. There is a few sizes in between, but I've never actually encountered components that size, so I'm also not gonna need the tips. And then I always get asked, why don't I plate the tips to make them last longer? Well, the answer is, it's just not worth it. It's not worth the effort, nor the money. At some point in the future, I will do a video plating some soldering tips and doing the maths, but for now, you'll just have to take my word for it. So, another thing I didn't really go into much detail about in the first video is the exact shape of the tip. If you look at the soldering tip from above, this cutout here is actually very slightly tapered. It roughly looks like this. So if you lower the soldering tip onto the component, it's gonna get stuck in it, then you can pull away the component, set it over, pin it down with the screwdriver and pull out the soldering iron. That actually works very well and it's also pretty fast and what makes it work that fast is actually these prongs have a very specific profile. If you look at them, they are gonna be roughly like this and the inside of the cutout is actually tapered because what you need is a very small amount of liquid solder sticking to this taper because once you get the component on the circuit board it's gonna be a block like this there's your circuit board and you've got a blob of solder solid solder on either side and if you've got the soldering tip and if it were a pointed corner here the pointy corner is just gonna hit the solid solder and pretty much nothing's gonna happen because heat transfer through a corner is actually really really bad. So that's why we've got a taper down here. So the soldering tip is going to lower further, the liquid solder is going to touch the solid solder. It's gonna be here the soldering tip, we've got the liquid solder and it's going to transfer the heat to the solid solder, it's gonna melt pretty quickly and then you can pick up the component and pull it away. Perfect, now that I successfully wasted the first half of the video explaining something you probably didn't click on the video for, let's get to desolder something. For the purpose of this video I'm only going to do one PC motherboard since it has all the component sizes we need. So first I'll desolder all the really big components using a traditional round tip, 
This is actually the one I made my first video, I just refurbished it so it held up almost a year and it only took me like 5 minutes to file it down. Not too bad after all. In case you're not familiar with the soldering, the easiest way to remove electrolytic capacitors is to push against them and heat up the opposing pin until it slips a little bit, then do the same thing the other way round. Except this circuit board seems to be swallowing all the heat cause it's a pain to get the solder to melt at all. Anyway, I'm gonna do this off camera and come back when I'm done. Alright, all the capacitors and these inductors are out. By the way, don't tell anyone that I resorted to a bigger soldering iron. With the bigger components literally out of the way, let's switch to the largest SMD tip and remove the diodes. When tinning these SMD tips, it's very important to put some solder directly on the chamfer, just in case it doesn't flow around the entire tip like it usually does. Well, let's see what this baby can do. That worked like a charm, I'd say. Unfortunately, it seems there are no more diodes that size on this motherboard, so let's try that again on something else. Oh, and a close-up would be nice. Another interesting application for this large tip is to desolder capacitors and other stuff in a single movement since it allows you to heat up both pins simultaneously. Unfortunately, it only works on less heat conductive circuit boards. Now let's switch to the next smaller tip and do some of the surface mounted capacitors. When the solder is a little dried up like it is here, it definitely helps to add some fresh one to overcome the high thermal conductivity of the circuit board. This tip also does these orange diodes, which works reasonably well. Now I'm gonna do the rest of these off camera and be back for the next even smaller footprint. This is now the 0805 imperial size footprint, there aren't too many components that size on this motherboard, so it should be fairly quick. These are definitely way easier to remove, that's mainly because the pads are a lot smaller so they don't suck away that much heat. Incidentally, this tip can also be used to remove SMD transistors, which would be a pain to remove otherwise. The only difficult thing I find is hitting the three pins simultaneously, which, on the other hand, should be a lot easier if you don't have to do it as close as possible to a camera lens. Lastly, let's do the smallest footprint. These are pretty much the lower limit of what can reasonably be soldered by hand without using a microscope. Actually, theoretically, I currently am using a microscope, because my phone is located between my eyes and the components to film all this. And as not to give you a false impression of the time it takes to get the components off the circuit board, here is desoldering at full speed without any fancy camera angles. Having removed everything I can reach with the soldering iron, I am now going to use the hot air gun to remove all these connectors with many many pins, some of these chips here, all these MOSFETs with their respective MOSFET drivers, as well as all the remaining tiny resistors I didn't reach. To be honest, I don't have very much experience desoldering with hot air because prior to filming this video I didn't do it at all. But what I can tell you is not to do it the way I did it and have the hot air gun underneath the PCB because molten solder might drip into the hot air gun and short something out inside, which, although it would provide a more interesting result, is probably too dangerous. Well, this is now about 98% empty, there is not a single resistor left on this motherboard. You didn't honestly believe I'd waste a resistor, did you? And I probably breathed in more soldering fumes than I should've, so I guess don't do it in the basement. But that leaves us with a nice jar full of a terrible mixture of through-hole and SMD components, and since this video is only about SMD components, I'm just gonna screen out all the bigger stuff and make it mysteriously vanish. Then I transfer the SMD components to a different beaker and soak them in isopropyl alcohol to dissolve away the flux they are usually covered in. The next morning I pour off the alcohol and spread everything on a sheet of paper to let it dry. The next day everything's dry and I can start sorting. First I take all the microcontrollers and integrated circuits to the computer to look up datasheets for them online and if I can't find any or the chip turns out to be useless, I just throw it away. The good ones go in their respective Ziploc bag and the organizer. Almost the same applies to big MOSFETs, transistors, voltage regulators and diodes, except that I don't throw out the ones I don't find datasheets for. 
In case of doubt, or if I can't conclusively identify something, it goes in a different container where it'll probably remain for the next 10 years. Next are the so-called orange diodes. Unfortunately, these have no markings whatsoever, so I usually just use them as a substitute for the 1N4148, which they probably are. Now we're left with capacitors, resistors and transistors. Since capacitors usually have no markings, I honestly don't even try to sort them, because sorting them would mean measuring each and every single one, and I really don't have time for that. So I just put them in a Ziploc bag until I need them. For SMD resistors and transistors, the parts that do have markings on them, I've got this SMD storage box which one of my sisters once made for me. So to deal with these components, I first sort them as far as possible, and honestly, without my trusty tweezers and a magnifier, I'd be really lost there. My hands just aren't as small as they were back when I was 15. Then everything I have at least duplicates of goes in the storage box. Leftovers go in a Ziploc bag, where they'll collect until I get new storage-worthy matches. Finally, I'm doing pretty much the same with the transistors, and after those, the party is simply over. So yeah, there we are, the motherboard is completely empty and my SMD storage box is full. I guess next I'll have to build a new storage box, don't I? All in all, I did get quite a few of these circuit boards processed, even though admittedly I didn't do much else than talking for the entire first half of the video. And I'm still left with this jar full of through-hole components to sort, but that's just a lot faster if I don't have to do it on camera. Plus, I learned a lot about desoldering with hot air. Well, that should about sum it all up. If this video is more like the kind of stuff you want to see, leave me a like, don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already, and I shall see you again in about a fortnight. Bye!